The dream is gone and I thought was mine. Nothing left for me to do but to cry. You know, I, I got elected uh, a couple years ago in November, got sworn in in January, and one of the very, very, very first things that happened is I had multiple people, not just one, but multiple people calling my office asking for opportunities to, to come talk with me about honoring Marty Robbins. And um, I, I just, for the life of me, could not, I couldn't fathom why we hadn't done this 25, 30 years ago. And I say that in all sincerity. I couldn't understand that. So I take a lot of pride in the fact that this has happened today, and I see some great things in the future for Glendale uh, and for you folks in honoring Marty Robbins. Uh, I fear a little bit, though, that there's been a generation that's been lost that don't really understand the importance Marty Robbins has done for Glendale. And so this plaque behind me and you folks, you're going to have to make that happen. You're going to have to make sure that other, other generations understand uh, what the man done. And the fact is, you know, he was a legend. I mean, no matter how you look at it, whether you love country music or you hated it, still a legend. Uh, to take a man from poverty to be able to accomplish what he accomplished from a small town of Glendale, which was dirt roads, mostly dirt roads at the time, uh, you know, I think that's pretty impressive. You got me singing the A lot of you know or knew Daddy uh, through the years. You know, you know what uh, you, you know what kind of uh, poverty I guess he grew up in, and uh, uh, the only the only house I remember was my grandmother lived right in the little triangle over here between Grand and and, and Glendale, when there was a, a railroad spur that went you know kind of came off of the main main line there, and. Uh, uh, I used to play on that railroad track quite a bit, and I used to get run off. I was only four or five years old, so. But uh, there, uh, we always came back to to the Phoenix area for Christmas after we we, we moved uh, in 1953 to Nashville. And uh, uh, we'd always come back every Christmas and every summer for two weeks. So I lived here a year out of the, out, I mean a month out of the year. So I always felt like the valley was kind of my second home anyway. So. Uh, but I always look forward to coming back here and seeing that model railroad uh, display for Christmas every year. And uh, that was a fond memory. Um, a lot of you may or may not know there was a Upton's Malt Shop down here on the corner, I believe, where Kathy's, uh, Kathy's Fabrics or Fab what, it's something like that. I forget what it is. But Daddy, uh, you know, he got into a little mischief occasion. I think those, of the, those that knew him and really knew him may know that. That he uh, that he would get into a little bit of trouble uh, on occasion, and he used to joke that uh, sometimes he was afraid to go back home to Glendale because that he thought there might still be people looking for him. <laughs> <coughs> but anyway, uh, when he got out of the Navy, he you know he spent three years in the Navy during World War II and uh, uh, saw action in the Bougainville Island invasion, and so he he he. Uh, I think that straightened him out a lot. Anyway, when he came home, he uh, was uh, riding around town in, in his motorcycle because back in those days, motorcycles were very respectable. And uh, uh, <laughs> he uh, pulled up to Upton's Malt Shop, and from the, this is the story I heard. Uh, he sees this young lady in there, and he tells his buddy, you see that girl in there? I'm going to marry that girl. And uh, he walked up to her, and he, he made an order, and he said, Hi, my name's Marty. And she said, Hi, I'm Arizona. And, and he goes, No, I'm, I'm from Arizona. Where are you? What you I know where you're from. What's your name? And she goes, again, she goes, Marizona. You know, and I don't think y'all, if you knew that that was her real name, was Marizona. My grandfather on her side had a real sense of humor. And... Uh, Anyway, uh, he made good on that promise. Uh, three years later, they were married and were married for 34 years when he passed away. And uh, that's probably, to me, is uh, probably the best, um, the best thing that Glendale ever did for Daddy was, was make it possible for him to meet my mother. Glendale has, has always been a very special place in, our, in my memory and I know in Daddy's memory. And I just... Uh, uh, I think this, uh, I want to thank Bill and Gertie Hickman for, for their 
wonderful contribution and everybody that was involved with Friends of Marty Robbins. And a I'm all dressed up for the dance. The last time I visited with Marty, he was putting on a show with his troop at the uh, Coliseum. And we went, Bill Smith and I took our wives and was gonna go to the show. Our wives had a package, a little box, wrapped up by Charlie Pitts, a local florist, and put a card in it. And we gave it to an usher as we went in. And uh, we didn't know it at the time, but when Martin got that box from the usher, he told us, he looked at the card and he said, I know what's in that box. And I, the reporter said, how would you know? I said, because I know those two guys. <laughs> anyway, when he opened up the box, there was a big old yellow grapefruit in there. <laughs> that was in <clears throat> After the show, we went down to the bus where they were loading on and uh, security people was holding people back, but he saw us walking up with our wives and uh, he said, he told the security people, let those people in. So, and he hollered at Smith, said, come on over here, Smith. And he said, Hickman, you two, bring your daughter with you, because he knew Gary was quite a bit younger than I am, so he wanted to get that gig in one last time. But that was the last time I really talked personally to him. Sometime in the 80s, I was serving on the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, there was a motion made, said, uh, you know, don't you think we ought to do something for uh, Marty Robbins? After all, everyone knows this is hometown. Anyway, I just want to say that Gertie and I are really glad that we were able to help with a historical society and find a permanent spot here in this park for Martin Robinson. Thank you. I'm in a It's such an honor to be here representing the commission on the dedication of this plaque to a native son. Um, hopefully this is the beginning of many more to come. Um, Park and Recreation Commission recently approved the guidelines for the park amenity and recognition plaques for the Community Services Department. The guidelines help promote mutual beneficial outcomes for both the city and the citizens itself. The Glendale Historical Society represented by Jessica Corey, she's been neglected over there, and Ron Short worked closely with the city staff and the Parks and Recreation to ensure that the plaque represented what Marty Robbins and um, what he was about and all he has accomplished. I would like to thank Ron Short, Jessica Corey, Glendale Historical Society, city staff, and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission for everything that they've done. Thank you. As Glendale uh, gets bigger, uh, and as we uh, got a whole lot of new stuff happening, it's really exciting. We also don't want to forget where we came from. Uh, I was uh, raised out here. Um, I knew many people who told me that they went to school with Marty Robbins, uh, and they would tell me as I was little. Uh, and I don't know about you guys, but whenever you listen to Marty uh, sing, uh, now I try and be an attentive driver when I'm driving on the freeway and the roads, but when I listen to Marty, my mind is somewhere else. I can hear the, the, the hawks in the canyon, I can smell the campfires, and, uh, and for me, I'm riding on the range. Uh, and his music did that. Uh, it was he, he could turn a phrase like nobody else and make a medley just sing, just sing. So uh, I actually played Big Iron at my wedding when we were going down the aisle. Uh, <laughs> that's a true story. So uh, thanks everybody for inviting us. Um, Marty, uh, and I know you're listening, so uh, thank you for making us look and sound so good. To the town on the free road, a stranger on Sunday. Thank you everyone for coming out to honor Marty Robbins. It was a long time coming, but it's deserving and the plaque is beautiful. And it's great to see his son, Ronnie Robbins here in Glendale and all of you people that love him. And he's been my hero for my whole adult life. I've spent, you know, um, promoting him, his music and keeping his spirit alive. And today's his birthday. 
and I'd like to say happy birthday, Marty and Mamie. And I'm glad all of you are here, and I'm honored to be here with you. About 10 years ago or so, right down in this area here, Juanita Buckley asked me if I would uh, consider being uh, program director for the Friends of Marty Robbins. And uh, I mean, it, it's such an honor to be, to be asked. I immediately said yes. I'd only I'd performed on the show, I think, one time, and uh, the position was being vacated. So it's, uh, it's been a real, it's been a real good trip since then. Uh, we went down to Wilcox the first time. Uh, she elected to move down there and mo move the museum down there. So if you didn't know that it, the museum was in Wilcox, that's exactly where it's at. And it's uh, thriving. Uh, something that, that could help the museum along a little bit better is uh, if anybody wanted to become members of the Friends of Marty Robbins, it's uh, it would be an honor to uh, to have you guys join us. Uh, I think it's only like eighteen dollars a year for a couple, twelve uh, for a single. So uh, you want to think about that. Uh, I want to thank Ronnie for for being here. It's been a been a long time since uh, I've been wanting to meet Ronnie, and and uh, it's just a, it's a, actually a, an honor to have Ronnie with us and just kind of an extension of his dad. The more I listen to Marty's music, I mean, I don't think I had a real appreciation for it when, when I was on first on the show and, and uh, wanting to ask me to, you know, become a part of uh, the uh, staff. Uh, but since then, it's really, I mean, it is, I'm just astounded at the, at the genius of the gentleman. Uh, I mean, from, from his uh, songwriting, over 500 songs, wasn't that, that somewhere close, Ronnie? And, uh, and, a, and, and a tremendous job. And of all the entertainers that you would ever uh, want to talk about or see or meet or whatever, uh, Marty Robbins, he did a, a crossover to many areas of the music industry, and he was successful at it. There's some artists try to do that, and you never hear from them again. But he just got better and better and better. It didn't matter which music. Uh, he decided to sing. It was it was it was all good, and uh, that says a lot for the man. Besides the the humanitarian efforts that he put forth and everything that that he's been to all of us. So what we try to achieve with our shows is to get as many young people involved with our uh, movement, I guess you would call it, and uh, make sure that uh, we get this tradition carried on and nobody ever forgets uh, who Marty Robbins is and what he's all about.